everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Katherine Westbrooks and in today's video we're going to be doing part two of our Canva tutorial. We are still in my backyard because my dog is still sunbathing, which I will show you in just a second. She looks adorable. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can use Canva to create engaging and fun class content for your outschool classes. If you have not already hit subscribe so you don't miss any future outschool videos, there are lots more to come, including part three of this tutorial. And now we're going to hop onto my computer and I'm going to show you how to create fun and engaging class content for your classes. All right, guys, so we are in Canva and I'm going to show you how you can create engaging class content for your outschool classes that your students are going to love. So first I want to start with ideas and whenever you um, start creating classes, you want to start with an idea and then um, ask yourself how you want to teach this concept. So what I like to do is I like to go to Google. I like to search for an anchor chart um, on something that I'm going to be teaching. So I would search for even and odd anchor chart. Okay, and then here are my search results. I'm going to go over to images. And then from here, um, so you can just choose which anchor chart best fits your own teaching style. But I'm going to choose this one just for an example and just so I can show you. So I use these anchor charts as inspiration and to help guide me whenever I'm creating my own anchor charts. So I don't copy it because that is someone else's work, so I do just use it for inspiration. So I'm going to show you an example of what this would look like as an anchor chart using Canva. So here's an example of an anchor chart that I made using this anchor chart as inspiration. So I didn't copy it, but I definitely did use it as inspiration to guide um, this um, anchor chart on Canva. If you're wondering how I made this, um, basically I just search for everything that you, that you see. So I would go, would go to elements and I search for line. Okay, here's the line that I used right here. So you can just put it on the screen. You can change the color, change the direction. There you go. Um, for the faces, I just searched face and um, chose a face that does not have anything on it. So I could do the eyes and do it different. Um, for the text, I just do text box um, and then add a heading and then I change the font, change the um, color. For oval, I just went up and searched oval and elements and then I just put it in my Canva template and then I just um, turned it around where it's upright. For the dots, um, I just searched dots. All I could find was a set of three. So that's not what I need. So I went ahead and just cropped it. I made it smaller and zoomed in. So here's the dot that I used. I just made it smaller and then changed the color around and there I have it. Another class example is if you wanted to teach on the states of matter. So now I do um, states of matter anchor chart, quick search, go up here to images. And then again, you just choose the anchor chart that you think fits your teaching style the best. Um, I used this one just to show you as an example. And I'm gonna show you what this looks like in Canva. Okay, so here's my example of this anchor chart in Canva. Okay, so again, I just use the lines. Um, so if you forgot how to do that, you just go to elements and then search line. Here's the line that I used. And then I just um, change it around, change the direction, um, change the color around, um, make it longer. For the text, again, I just go over to, to the text box, add a heading, I can change the font around. Um, and then for the pictures, I just searched in elements, I searched the picture. So I searched car, and then there's the car that I used. So you can just search for all of the things that you want to put on your anchor chart. So here's an anchor chart that you can use on Canva. Um, and I definitely feel like it's engaging. Um, the students are going to enjoy looking at it and it has really cool pictures. So here's just an example. So you can apply this concept to any anchor chart, um, any subject area that you want to teach. Okay, so next I'm going to show you um, a different way that you can engage students in your lessons. So I'm going to go off of this States of Matter um, example. And then down here, you see that I have different states of matter pictures. Okay, so if you wanted to um, show this to your students, you could call on the students to tell you examples of solids, liquids, and gases. Another example is if you were doing a class on even and odd numbers. Okay, um, here is what you could do for this. Um, so this is kind of cute. So you can use different um, pictures of animals. So um, I'm going to do a cow so I can show you how I got this. So here's my cow. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. And then I can drag and drop the five um, over my cow, but see how it goes behind my cow? Well, that's not going to work because then the students won't be able to see it. So I'm going to make sure that my five is selected. I'm going to go over here to position and I'm going to go to forward. Okay, that's going to bring my five over the cow instead of behind it. And then I can resize and here's my cow. Same thing with the nine. See, I wanted to do a duck. Okay, so here's my duck. Put this duck over. Again, I'm going to drag over this nine and it goes behind my duck. Well, that's not gonna work. I wanna go to position, forward, 
here is my nine now, I'm gonna make it smaller, and there I go. So I can ask the students, um, which animal has an odd number? Which animal has an even number? And then the students can tell me the animal. So this is just one example of a way that you could kind of gamify your lesson content and make it really colorful and really engaging for your students. If you wanted your students to be able to circle the objects on the screen, then whenever you screen share with your students, then you can give them access to the mouse and they can circle the objects that you want them to circle on the screen. So you could call on students to circle um, all of the even numbers that they see, all of the odd numbers that they see, and they can circle on the screen. If you don't want to have students circle on the screen or if you're not sure how to do that, that's okay. So you can also have students just tell you um, what they see on the screen. So for example, these are all nouns and verbs. Okay, so um, I could ask the students to tell me what is an example of a verb that you see on this slide. And they could um, tell me, oh, I see a man running. Okay, so run is a verb. Um, okay, so what is an example of a noun that you see on this slide? Oh, I see a book. A book is a, a noun. So you could go through your content that way and just have students tell you verbally um, what they see on the screen. Here's another example if you were teaching a phonics class is you could have pictures of the animals, um, have the text, to get one letter underlined, I just have to highlight this and click underline. But I could ask the students, um, what animal has a short A sound? Okay, ah. What animal has a short A sound? Read the words with the students and then call on someone to tell you which animal has a short A sound. And then you could repeat that with short I and short O. And you could do multiple of these slides during one lesson with just different animals or different vowel sounds. And then that could be a really engaging way for you to capture your students' attention while still also teaching them something. If you're doing a math class, you could also do something like this, where you do something kind of fun on the screen and you have the kids add. So you could ask the students, how many unicorns do you see on the top row? Call on someone, okay, four. Okay, great, how many unicorns do you see on the bottom row? Two, okay, so what is four plus two? How many unicorns do you see all together? So there are tons of different graphics on Canva, guys, so there are endless possibilities for what you could use. Um, I would just focus on um, what you're teaching and kind of cater it to your audience and your class. Here's another example of what you could do for um, a math class. So say you are teaching a class on fractions, okay? So you could show something like this and you could ask the students, um, what fraction of the frogs are green? What fraction of the frogs are orange? And I'll show you how I changed the color so on this particular frog that I used, um, see how all these different colors pop up on, um, at the top? That means that I can change the color of the frog. So instead of green, um, if I wanted to do red, then that changes my frog's color. And if I don't like that, I can just click this little undo button and then it changes him back to green. And lastly, guys, I'm going to show you how you can get these different graphics on Canva into your presentations on Google Slides so you can actually use them for your classes. So make sure that anything that you create um, for your class content, that you're using the YouTube thumbnail. If you're not sure how to do that, then you go up here to templates and you search YouTube thumbnail. This is the template size that you want for your class content. So all of these examples are all using the YouTube thumbnail template. So I'm only gonna show you this example right here, page eight. So I'm gonna go up here to download. I'm going to click download. Um, I want it as a PNG and I'm going to select page Eight. I'm going to press done and download. Okay, so here is my class down here. Okay, I'm going to go right here to my downloads. Hopefully you can see this on my screen share. And then here's the picture that I just downloaded. Okay, I'm just going to drag and drop. And then um, I have to just move it over a little bit where it is centered. But see how this fits perfectly over my Google slide presentation. So once I click uh, present, then here it is, it is full screen. This is what my students will see. Um, see how it is bright, colorful, super engaging, super fun, um, in a way that you can really capture your students' attention in your classes. All right guys, welcome back. Hopefully that was helpful for you guys. If it was, please like this video and subscribe so you don't miss any future OutSchool videos. I will see you next time. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.